Channel 2S is brought to you by New Type HQ. Get your kits and supplies at the link in the description below. So let's talk about some Witch from Mercury kits. So, now two of these kits have already been released. The Lefrith and the Burger Boy. These came out around the same time that the prologue first dropped because these are the two mobile suits that we see the most of in the prologue. Now, I remember I was originally speculating about the Gundam Lefrith being some sort of sort of secondary Gundam, kind of like the GR Kane in g Reco, where it's like the secondary suit to the Artemis, but instead, this is actually apparently some sort of prototype to the Artemis. This is sort of the precursor to it that we see in the prologue, and this is also something that we're probably not going to see much of past the first episode or two of the show. I guarantee you, as soon as we see the Artemis, you're probably never going to see this thing again. Which is understandable, since it is a prototype mobile suit. It does give me a little bit of concern, just because that was one of the things that really did bug me about IBO, was the insanely fast turnover rate of mobile suits in the show. They were very, very aggressively trying to sell as many different model kits as they possibly could. So it seemed like every time they introduced a cool new mobile suit or a new character, they would maybe be in the show for like two episodes and then you'd never see it again, or the character would die or the Gundam would be destroyed or be upgraded the next time you see it. And there was a lot of really interesting designs like the Floros, for example, that you never really got to see do much of anything at all because they were so focused on, you know, rapid fire introducing the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And while it does make sense in the context of the story for the Lefrith to only be in the first couple episodes, I really hope that's not a precedent that they're going to continue through the rest of the show. You know, stuff like the Burger Boy, Burger Boy, whatever, BB, it's a cool looking mecha. I want to see more of that mecha in the show, and I'm going to be really disappointed if it gets defeated in like, you know, episode three or something. And it's funny because they obviously do that for marketing and for like kit sales and stuff, but it kind of almost had an opposite effect on me when it came to the kits because looking back on IBO, you know, six, seven years later, there are almost no kits from IBO that I actually want because none of the mecha in the show left any kind of real lasting impression on me because they were constantly being rotated out. If they focused more, on a few of them and really let them use them a lot and really let you get attached to them, I think I would, ha would have had a stronger emotional connection to them and would have been more inclined to buy the kits. Begiru, Begiru, Bow, Begiru, Bow. It's, yeah, I feel like the Japanese don't even know how to say it. But it's a cool design. It's very, very Cubelay-esque. We got to see this in action in the in the anime, so we got to see these bits shoot out and kind of cancel out the the psycho frame abilities of the Lefrith. These aren't beam swords, they're just regular physical swords. They're made out of green plastic, no translucency there. So it's kind of interesting because when I first saw images of this kit, I was expecting these flaps on the back to do more. I was thinking that maybe these two pieces would unfold into some sort of subarm, but it looks like they just pop open slightly to make slightly bigger wings, which is not gonna lie, a little bit disappointing. I was hoping there was gonna be more going on with those. So here's the aerial. I've already talked about this before. I think the design looks fine. As far as like new stuff we saw of it, we got to see the shield in action. You can separate the shield, it turns into a bunch of funnel bits, and then it also turns into armor for the Gundam, and I'm I'm kind of wondering why they don't have photos of that here, because that's definitely something they've shown off. It's got like bits on the back kind of and on the shoulder. Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's what this picture is supposed to be. It doesn't really show it off very well, though. Then we got this fancy guy here. I'm kind of getting some some pre-rebate Gujion vibes from it. Not just in terms of the design, but just in terms of the overall build and quality of the kit. This looks like a kit that's going to be really like chunky and hollow. Not super poseable because it doesn't really have to be. Design-wise, I'm not really feeling this too much. Again, if the character pilot in this turns out to be awesome, I might pick one up. But just in terms of the mobile suit design exclusively, Nothing here is really jumping out to me. He has a gun underneath his shoulder pad, and then he has this this uh, kind of cross spear thing. Halberd, I guess. I don't know what I don't know what the technical term would be for this kind of weapon. And then there is a mass-produced version of it as well, which is just a little bit less fancy looking, and he has a different axe. The shiny gold bits on the edge of the axe are going to be stickers. Then we have the little grunt guy. This thing just looks like they took a 30-minute missions design they hadn't used yet and slapped it in Witch for Mercury. I'm not seeing a whole lot of visual continuity with other designs we've seen so far, so I'm assuming this is used by a different faction. It's very generic, which makes sense because it's supposed to be a like an infantry suit. I just feel that they made it a bit too generic because something like the Zaku or the Tieran still has some character to it. This feels like the most grunty grunt that's ever grunted. It is so by the books, generic 30 minute missions, 
disposable cannon fodder that I don't really feel like super attached to it. And then we have another grunt here. He's like a little stubby guy, kind of like a core Gundam. It looks almost more like a worker unit than something that's designed for combat. Well, actually, no, maybe it is because he's got like this stubby little baton thing, almost like it's meant for like training or repairing space colonies. And then we have this guy. This is another Gundam. I don't remember the official romanization of the name, but it is giving me big Gaia gear vibes. Uh, pretty cool looking. Doesn't look like anything you'd expect from Gundam. And out of the designs we've seen so far, this does spark the most interest in me, but it's still a very small amount of interest, especially if it's a sniper unit. Yeah, this is totally up my alley. Oh, this is the guy. Okay, I remember now. Yeah, so this kit has purple beam sabers, and I don't think we've ever gotten purple saber effect parts before. So if you want some awesome purple sabers for your kit, even if you don't necessarily have a lot of interest in this kit, it might be worth it for the sabers alone because those are some really cool sabers. I would say behind the Gundam we just looked at, this is probably my second favorite. Get hyped guys. In the two months that I've been gone, Bandai has announced not just one, but two whole models in two months. I know, how crazy. This is the high grade Gundam low booster. Now you guys already know, I love me some G-Unit. I really do like the G-Unit designs. Unfortunately, I think the base kit that they use for them is a little bit bare bones. It just feels a bit, a bit underbaked, especially for a premium Bandai kit that goes for premium prices. And I ended up liking the Escalepius, um, not loving it, but definitely liking it. And the low booster appears to be more of that, where it's gonna be a really big kit, a really expensive kit. This is another one that cost me like $60 after shipping, but man, just like with the Asclepius, this was one of those kits that I just had to pick up. Outrageous price or not, this thing is just so cool. I was not a fan of the original design for the low booster, but the way they redesigned it for the new kit looks phenomenal. He's got the cool cannons on the shoulders. There seems to be some sort of effect part for them as well. Kind of reminds me of those uh, funnel effects that the old Master Grade High New Gundam had, where you just stick them in the middle of the funnel. And it does transform. Looks like a wing transformation. You just, you set the guy down. You flip his legs around. Although actually you flip them around so they're facing forwards. That looks like the actual joint bending around. So I think they're gonna modify the legs on the original Geminus so that he can rotate his knees forward because that doesn't look like there's any parts forming involved in that, which is actually kind of impressive. I definitely pre-ordered one of these when they came out. It was expensive, but hopefully it'll be worth it. And the other P-Bandai kit was a little more recently announced. In fact, I think this just got announced like a few days ago and it is Slegger's GM from Dones Island, which if you haven't seen it, was a very okay movie. I was definitely whelmed by that movie when I saw it. It was not super great, not super bad, just kind of okay. Um, I would say the highlight of it was the Southern Cross Sakus. I thought those were very cool, and I would love to see a kit of at least one version of those, although there was a camo pattern and unique weapons for each of the pilots, so it wouldn't surprise me if Bandai ends up doing some kind of like four pack or five pack that includes a whole bunch of different versions of them. But the other highlight as far as Mecha goes in that movie was Slegger's GM, which was one of the most normal looking GMs we've gotten out of Origin. As you can see, it is pretty much just the standard GM design, no cannon parts, no sniper parts, no interceptor parts, just a regular old classic GM. Now the shield is a bit different. It does have some more thrusters in the back. It's got a new gun and the color scheme is more in line with the GM3, but it's still probably the closest we've got to just a regular GM origin right now, which is pretty cool because the GM is definitely one of those older high grades that hasn't gotten a revive yet. So origin GM, kind of the closest thing we have to revive right now. Now, if you specifically just want to get this as an updated GM and you don't necessarily care for these colors, I would probably hold off on this release because going off the release pattern of previous origin kits, there is a very high likelihood that we are going to be getting a much more standard GM shortly after this, because you do see some more standard GMs in Dones Island as well. If that's more in line with what you want, I would recommend holding off on this kit. But if you like these colors and you like this design, I would say this is definitely one that's worth picking up. I don't know if I'll get this one though. I think I'll wait until they do the true vanilla GM. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like. This video was recorded from one of my live streams. I usually try to stream around four o'clock in the afternoon till six or seven in the evening, Eastern Standard Time. If you wanna make sure you don't miss the next stream or any future videos I upload, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. I'd like to also extend a thank you to my patrons for helping make this channel possible and a special thank you to my master grade tier patrons like yank if you want to join the patreon yourself you will gain access to cool features like full archives of past streams and early access to some new videos thanks again for watching and as always i'm your host second soundwave and i'll see you next time take care guys